Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's a very exciting one because we just got back from our trip to Vietnam and I bought a lot of stuff. Safe to say I did a little bit of damage, so let's just jump in and I can share with you everything that I got. Now, this is the most stuff I have ever brought back from a trip like ever, ever. And the only reason this actually ended up working out was because everything is just so affordable from North American standpoints in Vietnam. And I'll run you through the cost of everything as I'm going through them, if I can remember them as much as possible. So let's just deep dive right in. First thing we're gonna go through is clothes. I actually didn't buy that much clothing, but I did buy a bunch of stuff. And the primary thing I went to Vietnam wanting to purchase were ao yais. So ao yais are just like traditional cultural long dresses. I have only one, which is my wedding one, and I wanted some more casual ones that I could wear from day to day. In the past, I've attended like a lot of familial events such as New Year's, like Lunar New Year, weddings, engagement parties, baby showers where people are always wearing ao yais. And I felt like I just wanted one to be able to have for those types of occasions. So I was like, Let's get them while we're there and I can get them made to measure, fit me perfectly, get different styles that I can't get here. And they're just like significantly cheaper there. So I wanted to go in and just get like one or two. Um, This girl ended up getting like, I don't even know, I think like five. So I'm gonna show you all of them. First one I got was actually when we were walking around in Saigon at the beginning of our trip. I was looking for one that I could bring with me to Hanoi so that we could shoot it at the incense village. Unfortunately, we were not even able to get to that village just because it was raining so much. So I bought this for that, but I ended up wearing it for other purposes and I still love it nonetheless. It's beautiful. And I'd say we got matching ones for Harrison and Peter too. So I'm gonna show you guys those as well. So it's this beautiful long gauzy navy blue has floral embroidery on this with some gold piping around the collar. The sleeves has some embroidery coming down here too with this at the ends. And it kind of just flows straight down towards the bottom of the dress. There's some detailing on the back as well. It was simple, the material is really lightweight, loose, airy, breathable. Oh, and it also came with a pair of gold pants. You can wear this traditionally, they're white pants, but I think they decided to pick gold to match with the embroidery on the top. Now this is not fitted to me because I purchased this in the Benton market. It's part of the ready to wear oh yeah, is that you can pick there. And because we were in a rush to get one so I could have one for Hanoi, we were only in Saigon for like 48 hours before we had to leave. This was my favorite one out of everything that I saw. When it comes to ready to wear oh yeah, is like there are some really nice ones. And after going through a couple of stalls at the market, you can no longer really haggle from the exterior clothing stores. They all have signs all over the place that say prices are fixed, no haggling, unless you go deep into the interior, then you can haggle, but it doesn't guarantee they're gonna have a lot of variety. And this one was just the nicest one that I could find. We purchased this at 550,000 VND. I don't know the exact exchange rate, but I think the math that I did that day was that it came down to about like 30, 40 bucks, something like that for this set. Sizing is like all over the place. I got this as an X and you'll see some other pieces that I got on my trip as well. I went from like a small to medium to like a large, so I would not say it's consistent. Just try on whatever fits and get it. As long as it fits, it doesn't matter what the size is. So this is an XL. I would also keep in mind that I find that armholes are really, really tight. I don't know if their shoulders and their shoulder blades are just smaller for Vietnamese women there, but it was always cutting into underneath where my shoulder blades are. So I always sized up so that I could get this tailored to fit me afterwards. So this is the first alley eye that I got with the matching pants. I did say we got matching ones for Peter and Harrison too. So this is Harrison's. It's a essentially like a mini me version of mine. Look how adorable this is. Like I, shut up, I cannot. We actually ended up finding his in Hoi An. His was 180,000 VND. So that's like just shy of like $10, I think for a set. He also has a matching pair of gold bottoms to go with it. And we originally went to one place that was trying to charge us like 400,000. We're like, no, we went to another place that brought it down to 150, but it wasn't the right size. And we finally found this one in another shop that they were willing to bring it down to 180. Fairly happy with that one. Peter also has a matching one, but his is just plain navy blue. I don't know where his is right now. I think he put it into the wash, so I do not have access to it. Gonna wear it this year for third, just because Harrison is gonna grow out of his after this year. There's no way he's gonna fit into it again. And I'll be able to wear mine year over year because I've stopped growing. We'll be able to match this year, which is pretty cute. If you ask me, I probably should have bought another size up so that you could wear it next year too, but it's okay. It's adorable, it matches, it does what we need to do. All right, that was the first Aoi Eye that I bought. And then I was actually given Gifted my second one by one of Peter's cousins. It is this beautiful, like dark pink. 
pink red one the trend right now in Vietnam is actually looser fit ones that are flowy they're not like perfectly fitted to your body as they used to be although people still do wear that it's just trendier to wear like a really casual loose fit so she gave me this one I don't ask for it she gifted to me on the last day out it's in like this really nice texture print here it doesn't have the mandarin collar that a lot of out guys typically have that like go up against your neck but the sleeves are open they flare a little bit they come up to about your elbow and then the rest of the dress just kind of like sits loosely on your body this one almost fits me perfectly already i just have to get some minor tailoring on the top part here so it fits a little bit better because it's slightly too large i don't know the exact size of this just because there is no sizing on here but i love this color and it's perfect because i did want a slightly redder one for that so i could have like red colors even though this one kind of like skews a little bit more pink now that i'm seeing it in person but it's really comfortable i love it the material is super lightweight really silky and it actually came with like the silkiest pants so the pants that came with that one are these pink ones really soft. I'm going to be using these pink ones for another outfit I'll show you afterwards. You don't always get pants to go with the matching top a lot of the times because I said that traditionally is white pants. You just buy the top and mix and match with whatever pants you have. This one is in a size small for the pants so I'm going to assume that this top is also a small and this is what I said when I mentioned that sizing is like inconsistent across the board. We went from XL to a small. Okay, so just like try it on and see if it fits. That's all that matters. But I love these pants. They have darts in the front, really comfortable, super lightweight. I don't think they're silk, but it literally feels like a really lightweight silk. And it's really comfortable and I love it. And surprisingly, this one also fits me without any alterations required. So I love this set. I've actually taken a couple of photos when I was in Vietnam and I can't wait to share them with you guys. So keep an eye out and stay tuned to my Instagram because you'll see it there. That is the second out guy. There is more coming. So after that, I went on a little shopping spree with one of Peter's aunts and his cousin when we were in Bao and we got some out guys there. So I mentioned that the trendy fit right now is to be a little bit more loose. This is another style that a lot of girls there are wearing. This one again, XL. <laughs> <laughs> I tried on a triple XL first and it was huge so we sized down to an XL and that was like the perfect fit It fits across my chest perfectly, but it's not fitted to your torso going down to your waist It's like fairly oversized This one's a little bit more contemporary because it has these huge bows on the front and instead of having like a pattern printed across it It just has some embroidered flowers going down I've always wanted like a bright yellow canary orange like clementine shade So this is perfect and I really like these gauzy ones because it's significantly lighter on your skin and much more breathable I mean I live in Canada, so it's not that hot But I can only imagine if you're wearing this in the dead of summer in Vietnam that this is gonna be insanely hot on you So love this one it also has two layers it has this light layer underneath and then this gauzy yellow one on the top of it this one did not come with pants so what I'm probably going to do is either wear my white pants that came with my wedding aoyai or take the gold one from my blue and wear it with this so you can just like truly mix and match but I feel like this might be a little bit too much yellow <laughs> for the whole set so I'm probably just gonna get the white one from my wedding dress and wear it with this one that's why I said that you don't really always have to buy pants they can be sold to you as just a shirt and then you just mix and match with whatever existing pants you already have a lot of the times nowadays people also just wear these with regular casual pants at least for men I don't know about women but I do have some silky flowy pants at home that I can wear with these as long as it's not like a pair of jeans you're pretty good you just want wide flare pants that are loose and comfortable to wear underneath this. So this one is 440,000 VND. I think it comes just shy of like $20 because it's just for the shirt. If you were to buy the pants with it, it probably would come out to roughly the same cost as the first one, the blue one that I showed you guys. I thought I was done with those three. I had zero intentions to buy more Aoyais, but I walked into a store in Saigon towards the last few days of our trip and I found this dress. Okay, so I didn't realize until afterwards that this is like a really popular fashion store in Vietnam. It's called Two by Katu. So I didn't plan to buy any of these. I was just shopping around and then I saw this and this looked absolutely beautiful. I actually first saw this print on just a blouse that was a halter top. It cut off to here. I really liked it because it has scenery of like temples, people walking through the forest, a bamboo forest. It's just very embroidery of Vietnamese illustrations that you would be familiar with if you have seen this before you just look at it and you're like Oh, I know what that is. I saw it as a top and I was like, wow, this would be really cute if they turned this into an guy. And then I was walking around the store looking at the dresses and then I found this normally I would never buy a white guy because it just white is associated with mourning and death in um, Buddhist religion and in Vietnamese culture So you kind of stray away from it, but because there is a lot of embroidery in this it skews 
towards the opposite of that and it's actually quite pretty on. I've never tried an Aoyai that is sleeveless before but I've had my eye on a couple because I saw some on Pinterest that looked really cute and I figured let's just give it a go. I really like the collar. It's not your traditional Mandarin collar. It has more of a point up here instead of the curve and it goes around your neck and this surprisingly fit me really really well. I was not expecting it to. This one I got in a size medium so a different size there. We're going from small medium to XL right now. So this one is a nice long length. It has two layers as well. The top is this gauzy layer with embroidery on it. And then the bottom is just like a simple white base. And then it's sleeveless. It cuts off going inwards to the top. And on the back, it has this like really long gauzy material that can either just be left like this. I have thrown it over my arms when I try to style it kind of like a pashmina, or you can tie it like a bow in the back. This one fits surprisingly so well. I put it on and it fit my body like a glove and I instantly knew I had to have it. I was like, I saw this, it has to be mine. There was another dress like this too, exact same silhouette in blue with 3D flowers sewn onto it. I also fell in love with it, but honestly at that point I was like, I do not need this many alley eyes. I don't wear them that often. I can probably get away with wearing this as a dress to some sort of other formal event, but I don't need multiple. So I'm just gonna stay with this one for now and maybe down the road if I go back to Vietnam in a few years, maybe I'll go back to that store and find a blue one. Hopefully they still have it or a different print but the silhouette this is a silhouette that i love and i never knew it could look this flattering on me so i'm obsessed this one does not come with pants but again i'm just gonna pull either the white pair of pants from my wedding one or as i suggested before the pink one that came with the red aoyai there's a lot of pink embroidery on this and I tried it on together and it looks really really cute very feminine or if I have a pair of blue pants I can wear it with this because there's blue embroidery on this which makes it really easy for me to change up the overall vibe of this oh yeah depending on what color of pants I want to wear with it so this one ended up being 840,000 VND significantly more expensive than the other ones I think this was around like 40 to 45 dollars Canadian but again I can never find something like this here for 45 dollars I'm pretty sure if somebody imported this here they would upsell this to make it like at least a minimum $100. So I'm just really happy that I managed to snag this while I was there for that price because it fits me like a glove. I literally do not need any alterations to be made to this. That concludes the Aoyais that I bought, but I also did a lot of other shopping when I was there for clothes. So at the same place, two by Katu, I also got this dress. This is not really like an Aoyai, but it's like a contemporary, I guess, inspiration of it. It's just this like short mini red dress with this beautiful embroidery detail on it. It has these pearl buttons going on the top. It has the mandarin collar and then these balloon sleeves and then actually ties underneath the arm here. It's fairly cute. This fits me really, really well. For some reason, I got this one in a small. Don't ask me why this is a small and that's a medium. They both fit me the same. And I like how it's a much more like cuter take on it. It's a little bit more flirty, feminine, a little sexy. I would not necessarily wear this for dut with my family, probably just around the house for fun or if I have some parties or events to go to. Really sad because I missed out on an Estee Lauder event while we were gone and they had like a whole mahjong night and I guess people were invited to dress up. I could have worn this dress there. Like, see, this is a perfect occasion for a dress like this. Now I have it. I love it. It fits me really well. Don't need any alterations made to it. It is so adorable. This one was 740,000 VND and I'm kind of mad because I just went onto their website and I know that they're currently selling it for 440,000 VND. I think it's around like $35 Canadian, but that the other one translates to around like 20, 25 bucks. Not the end of the world because it's still fairly cheaper than what I would be able to buy this for, here at home at least. I saw a dress from Sally that I really wanted that was like six, seven hundred dollars and I just haven't bought it yet because I was like, that's a little bit steep for a very, very occasion dress. And then I saw this and I was like, okay, I can, I can deal with spending like $35 on a dress like this because I'm not going to wear it every day so I won't feel like I spent too much money but it's still ridiculously cute. Got this dress and I cannot wait to get some wear out of it because it's so cute and I it's red. Red is for good luck so couldn't say no to it. And then also in Saigon I found this other store called Seco D and I, I don't know why, I'm on like an Asian inspiration kick when it comes to clothes right now. I found this top that actually had a matching skirt but I didn't buy the skirt because I felt like that's just not really my style. I first wanted this in black because it had little tie details that looked really cute that I figured I could wear with like my black maxi skirt from Dynamite, but they didn't have any more of my size. And then I saw this white one that had this beautiful jacquard print on it. And it also has the three ties here that you can turn into a bow tie. It has a mandarin collar at the top and puffy sleeves, but it is cropped, very similar to that red dress. It's cropped, fits me well, size small. I really like it. I can wear this with like skirts, jeans, pants, make it a little bit more modern, but it still has that traditional silhouette to it. So really adorable. This one was 285. 5,000 VND, so I think that's around like 
$15 ish still very affordable by North American standpoint I'm really happy with this one and it feels like I didn't spend that much money on clothes that was not all the clothes that I bought though I also got some other stuff this is the expensive stuff one of my other main goals when we were in Vietnam was to get some clothes tailor-made for us so Vietnam is actually a manufacturing hub for a lot of international companies and because of that they have a lot of tailor shops there specifically in Hoi An it's like the capital of tailoring and there's this really popular one that I saw on TikTok it's called Bari Tailors I decided to give it a go and I'm not lying they are insanely busy when we went in I did not realize how many other people would be there like tourists like international tourists North American tourists Australians like there were so many people there and they speak really good English so I could do a whole other video on that if you guys are interested I might just do it more on TikTok than on YouTube though but all of the sales associates there speak fairly decent English we spoke to them in Vietnamese just because it was just easier to communicate with them that way and I got a couple pieces made so between myself and Peter I think we spent almost like a thousand dollars like 500 each he got like two suits and two shirts made I got two sets two pairs of pants and one shirt so I'm gonna show you everything that I got done there you can literally make almost anything and everything there on our last day when we went to go pick it up I saw a woman trying on a wool full length winter jacket and I was like why did I not think of making this because I definitely would love to get a custom made jacket that fits me perfectly so I think I might go back one day and get that done because that's going to be the next thing I want to check off my list from there it's a long process you do need to go on your first day to give them all the details of what you want to be made and then you're going to show back up again to try and the clothes after they're made and if there's any fitting changes that need to be done such as like alterations cuts tightening shortening whatever you have to come back a third time to get that done which you will be fitted again for and if that's finalized and they'll tell you to go away for about like an hour or so while they do the final details such as cutting through all of the buttonholes and then loose threads and then you can pick it up an hour later so you could have upwards of like four visits if you do not have the perfect fit right away and it depends on how complex what you're asking to be made is in terms of complexity. They also have a wide variety of pre-made designs that you can pick from there from a book if you just want to pick the fabric and they'll measure you and cut you a dress that looks exactly like that. I guess because they have so many people that come and go they kind of keep designs on hand so they can give customers inspiration if all you want to do is go and get a custom made outfit but you just don't know what you want. Or alternatively you can also bring in photos of exactly what you want and they'll make it for you. So it's really cool. It's a completely customized experience and I just really like it because now I have clothes that fit me perfectly to my body proportions which I love. I want to get some classic pieces made that I don't have in my closet and I haven't been able to find or are just like wildly expensive for what I would be comfortable spending so let me run through everything that I got. We went a total of four times. I got quite a few pieces done. I knew number one right off the bat I really wanted a pair of white linen pants. I wanted some formal ones that I could wear every day to make my outfits look smart in the summertime but without a drawstring just because I don't want that like roughly texture on my waist. Thinking back now though I kind of wish I also got an extra pair that had a drawstring so I can wear it casually on like beaches but the primary was just from like a slightly more formal casual look. So I got this one that has a button at the top here. There are no pockets because I don't like the ability of seeing like the line of the pockets on linen and because linen is such like a lightweight material. I don't like that. So I said no pockets and then it goes all the way down to the bottom here. This is perfect in terms of like height for me, length or pants. I usually find that they're way too long or way too short and it fits my waist so perfectly too and the details on this are wild. Like everything is pressed to perfection. They trim all the excess material when you're done afterwards it's just I'm so happy with this and it's like such a soft linen too there's like a variety of different colors you could pick from and I picked like a really crisp white so don't worry they have like I feel like over a thousand swatches of material from like linen to cotton to synthetics to like wools you'll find what you want there and like a hundred different shades too so so this was the first pair that I got a pair of wide leg linen summer pants that are buttoned to the top and I love them I've already worn them out and they're my favorite pants at the moment sorry Koss I still like my white ones from there but this is my new favorite one now so these are the pants that I mentioned that I wish I also got in white but I saw this material in one of their swatch booklets and I wanted a pair of casual pants made these are drawstring and they do come with a pocket because it's a thicker material and it's not as translucent you can't really see through it so you won't be able to see if there are pockets or not so added pockets to it and these are so comfortable I can wear this with like a crisp white top a tank top a bathing suit Peter also ended up well we got persuaded to get a shirt made 
made for him in the exact same material so that I can steal it if I really need to and I can have like a full set. How cute would this be with a bikini and then I steal his shirt and just wear it as a cover up. I think that'd be perfect. Anyways, I digress. He has a shirt made in this color too, the exact same fabric. I think it looks really smart on him and I just like how loose and casual and comfortable it is. It kind of looks like pajama pants so you could get away with wearing it as pajama pants but I think I'm gonna wear them as everyday casual pants because they're just perfect in terms of like length, waist, dropped down to the crotch. Mm, chef's kiss. I love these so much. And then for the matching sets. So I saw this matching set online and I really liked it. It's something different. I believe it's an Australian company and when it comes to Australian brands and designs, it costs an arm and a leg to get it across the pond so I figured let's get it made and at least it's tailored to my measurements it's not the perfect one um, out of all the pieces that I got made I love it like the least but it's still really cute and comfortable and I think I can get quite a bit of wear out of it in the summertime so there are these black pants that I have in this like kind of texture and what I like about it it has these keyhole cutouts on the side which tie at a drawstring so you can adjust the waist to sit either lower or higher depending on how tight you want it to be they're very comfortable they're long and they're breezy in the summer they're not too hot either and it comes with a matching top that you can actually wear reversed if you choose to. I asked them to make it that way because that's how the top actually is designed from that other brand. I forget the name now and the front looks like this and you just tie it up with these drawstrings to make bows. I do wish that this was a little bit thinner though just because I feel like it looks really thick against this material. It looks really chunky but I think it's because of the material that they had to make these strings significantly thicker. It's just a very like stretchy and dense material. I don't know. So you can wear it this way or you can turn it around and wear it like a vest like this. Very comfortable, super breezy. I like it as a set because I can mix and match it with other pieces. I've also already worn this in Vietnam. Actually, I think I've worn every single piece at least once when we were in Vietnam already because we got this in Hoi An and I was like just midway through the trip. So I had quite a few days left to wear this stuff and I found reasons to wear all of them. My next matching set, which is one of my favorite pieces besides the white pants, is this navy blue one in a linen. I kind of used a couple of different reference point images to make this. I found something off of Reformation and then I found a couple of other matching pieces on Pinterest and we kind of mix and match the aspects that I like to create the perfect set for myself. So it's this really long blue vest here. I didn't actually even ask for these pockets to be included but they did include them and they're really nicely sewn like really well planned out <laughs> and it's just really crisp detail lines. It has buttons going down the front, a really high neckline you'll see in the cutaway and then the front has a really sharp a coming up. It's kind of splits at the hem and this will help you to either show off mid, like mid waist or the hem of your pants or whatever you're wearing underneath. And in the back it has an adjustable little, I don't know what these are called, like this buckle situation back here. But I love this. I got this in a beautiful midnight blue indigo shade because I wanted something a little bit different from what I already have. I have so many linens in like whites and blacks already. I figured let's get a color. This is chic and I think this is going to be a timeless addition to my closet. And it is a set. So I actually got skirt to go with it. The Reformation one is a mini skirt. They don't sell it as a set. It's just two separate pieces and I didn't want a blue mini skirt just because I don't know where I'm going to ever wear that to. So I actually asked them to make a long floor length one. It does have a slit on the side which makes it really easy for me to wear and it's zipper finished all the way at the top. The finishing is perfection like everything else that I've seen and it's really comfortable and it fits my waist perfectly. And as this is a really long maxi skirt, I can wear this with other things as well such as like a white press button down or crop tops or like a sweater in the winter time. It just, it works well. And it kind of creates like a really long dress silhouette when I wear this and I'm obsessed. This is like by far my favorite. I think out of everything I got made, this is my second favorite one. The white pants being the first and then this matching set the second and then maybe those striped pants Third. What I'm going to show you next is my fourth favorite. So I got a dress made and unfortunately it broke while I was wearing it. I think it broke accidentally by just like poor design. This is not a dress that they had designed themselves. I brought in a dress from a brand Addersy that I really wanted but it's like almost a thousand Canadian. They're an American company and if I buy it it doesn't fit me. I have to pay to ship it back. So it's like I'm not spending a thousand dollars on a dress. Let me see if I like this style first and have it made here and if I like it maybe I can buy it down the road. So it looks like this. It's like a beautiful simple dress. The one that I saw online at Addersea is like a plain white color and it had these like embroidered stripes going down the front. They didn't have that type of fabric there. It's like a jacquard embroidery onto it. So I opted for this striped one instead that gives them more of like a rustic casual vacation vibe. It's not as structured as the other one because that one has like a really stiff firm fabric but it's still gorgeous nonetheless. And then I love it because it has buttons going down all the way to the front. And then the extra detailing that's my favorite is the scooped and curved edges of the base here. Now it's also supposed to have a scooped frame at the top, but 
they weren't able to do that just because I think it's just too tight in terms of details for them to be able to create and it would cost them a lot extra so I figured that's fine we'll skip that as long as I have it at the bottom here I'm fairly happy it has darting in the back that pulls it in really nicely to my body and makes it look a lot slimmer otherwise when I first tried it on my first fitting it looked like a box on me it just it wasn't cute anyways moving over to the straps at the top there are these really fine small spaghetti straps that were made however I don't think they were secured well enough so when I was wearing it seams kind of opened up a little bit because I was sitting on it inside of a cafe and it pulled and it broke luckily it didn't fall on me so I didn't expose myself to anybody but I'm a little bit annoyed because now I have to get this fixed on my own my aunt sews a lot so I'll probably just get her to do it but I still really like this dress and I was hoping to be able to wear it again when I came back home and now I can't I have to get it fixed before I can wear it again so that's kind of sucky it's a bummer but I still really love the dress nonetheless and once it's fixed I'm gonna get a lot of wear this for the summer I also want to mention all these are lined on the inside to give it extra structure and if you ask for lining and stuff they'll do it for you so yeah those white pants I could have gotten them lined if I wanted them to be but I wanted them translucent so I didn't I left it as is so you can really customize all of your clothes to like the nth detail quick process that we went through we went on the first day gave them all the designs that we wanted but second day we came back tried on all of our pieces and made some adjustments to it third day came back oh Peter finished after the second day everything that he made just like minor adjustments and they were able to just like fix them at that point third day we came back I tried on the adjustments that I wanted made for mine and then I approved everything and then we came back that same day a fourth time after they cut all the loose threads and opened up all the buttonholes for us to pick up all of our stuff and that was it and I think mine was around like 400 Canadian Peter's was around 500 Canadian because he got two suits made and like I think two shirts so I would say it roughly averages out to be like 50 to 70 dollars per piece depending on what you get made so I don't really know because they didn't break down the full cost for us but I think it truly just depends on the complexity of what you're getting made ballpark around there it's not as cheap as you think it gets a little bit pricier but honestly for custom made tailored clothes that fit your body perfectly I think it's worth the price because you could go home and buy any of these pieces full price for like 50 60 dollars and spend another 20 30 dollars on top of that to get it tailored to fit you so at least this way you get to pick the fit the like the color and any extra details you want added to it such as like pockets um, how you want seams to be finished how you want things taken in it's an overall really good experience and I like it I would definitely go back again in the future if I ever am in Hoi An or just like give them a call up and order some stuff and then have family ship it over to me after Afterwards. So besides those clothes, the only other things that we really got um, were from Uniqlo. So I picked up this t-shirt for Harrison. It's in the size 4 to 5. This was 2000 VND. It was on sale. So I think that comes down to about like $10. And this is like a slightly larger size for him because I want to stock up and stuff for this upcoming summer. We also got a friend of ours who's expecting a baby soon. This little onesie set. It's so cute. It has like woodland creatures on it. It's like bears, deers, and like rabbits. This is also 200,000 VND. So another $10 on sale as well too. I don't know what the size in the kid's gonna be so we got 12 to 18 months so that it can eventually fit like down the road. Our goal whenever we travel now is to pick up a book in that country and in their native language to bring home for Harrison. So we got him two board books from Vietnam. This is one about Lunar New Year. It goes through like different foods, decorations, clothes, and it's all in Vietnamese so that I can learn to read a little bit better and teach Harrison how to read as well. And also because we are going to be potty training him too, I got him this little book right here. It kind of like goes through the workings of like how to get trained to use a toilet for boys. So it's pretty cute. This one was 60,000 VND, so it translates around to like $3 Canadian. And this was 89,000 VND, so it's about like $4.50, $5 Canadian. And because I want to be cool auntie and uncle, we picked up a lot of really fun, they're not really red so I can't really say red pockets but like lacy so every year traditionally for Lunar New Year the generation that is above the ones that are kids will gift out pockets of cash for good luck um now that we have Harrison and we actually have a lot of friends and family this year who have kids of their own we're gonna be expected now to give out the money instead of receiving it I'm kind of sad because I still kind of wish I got money but it's it's okay it's fun this way I know we'll be remembered as a fun auntie and uncle with the cool red pocket designs so these are not your traditional ones they definitely have a lot more illustration and color on it but they're still really really pretty nonetheless and these varied across the board price point wise from like 9,000 VND which is like 40 50 cents up to like 13,000 VND which is a, I think it's like 60 70 cents per packet really cute I love them and we're gonna be giving away some of these as gifts as well not with money but like actual packets to family members so that they can use it to give away the money as gifts oh I also forgot to mention to go along with the alias that we got we got Harrison and Nong La and also one for Kobe as well these are rice hats very traditional wear that a lot of people in Vietnam have they use it as sun protection you just keep it over your head and because of the wide brim it actually gives you quite a bit of sun protection not just on your face but on your body and your chest as well people don't really wear them as much every day anymore 
it's much more traditional and you would probably only really see a lot of local people wearing it if they're wearing it with like a full fit. Uh, I don't have one for myself because I just have no use for it, but I figured it'd be fun just to get Harrison one. And then we got this mini one for Kobe. I don't think he would actually ever wear it, but it's just for S and Gs, so we have this now. <laughs> Look how tiny they are. They're so freaking cute. I forgot to show you guys the owie eyes that we got for my cousin's kids. They're so cute. Okay, let me see if I can organize this without mixing it all up. We got this purple one, really adorable. They want a more traditional style one. So this one has some embroidery detail on the front. This one is for a boy. It's like gold with like a dragon embroidery situation on the front here. I'm not gonna list off the prices for these. They ranged anywhere from like 190 to 250,000 BND. So anywhere from like $10 up to like 12, 13 bucks for a set. It's just hard for me to show you all of them. So I'm just gonna show you a couple so you can see what they look like. There's also this green one that we got for our friend's kid that's not born yet. So we don't know the gender, but we wanted to get something that wasn't necessarily like super genderfied and the very traditional Vietnamese owie eyes are like very, very gender colored. So got this two piece set. This is more like pajamas to wear around the house, but still really cute nonetheless. And then this is the matching yellow owie eye that's similar to that purple one that I showed you guys. Really cute with the beautiful embroidery detail on it as well. And then we also had some really traditional looking ones. Like this is like OG style. So adorable, beautiful, bright yellow color. And of course the traditional red with the medallions all over it. Like it's beautiful. I love it. Couldn't ask for more. Uh, I'm gonna have to go get Harrison so many more. He already has a lot right now as is, but like on our next trip back to Vietnam, I'm gonna get him so many more because I wanna make sure that he has enough to have one for every year as he's growing up because we're not gonna be able to go back to Vietnam every single year. So I gotta stock up there. Okay, so that is essentially it for clothes. I also got some jewelry. When I was in Halong, I really wanted to get a set of pearls because Vietnam is really known for their freshwater and aquaria pearls. Unfortunately, when I was looking at the prices, they seem outrageously priced there. Like a pair of earrings was like four or $500 Canadian, which doesn't make sense because I can get the same pair of earrings here at Costco for like vetted quality to make sure they're like actually authentic for like two, $300. So I was like, I'm not gonna buy that there. Peter's family um, lives in Malup. Well, he has family that lives in Malup and they actually have a jewelry store. So they very kindly gifted me a set of pearls because I bought some for my mom and for my cousin and they saw that I really liked them. So they gave me a set, which was really, really nice. I put it on and one of the clasps fell off. So I have to get it fixed because I asked them to shorten it for me. And I think in the process of shortening it it may have just like weakened the string a little bit so we're just gonna have to fix that slightly when we get home but it'll be okay there is a bracelet here and it's like a whole matching set i don't know how to hold this up so it doesn't fall out but there's a necklace and there are also earrings this is the set of pearls i also have another set from my mom and my cousin I'm gonna be excited to wear these with all of my upcoming galas that i have to attend i have always wanted like a pearl set anyway so this was like the perfect situation to get one for myself. And this was a gift, so I don't know the price of this set, sorry. And while we were there, I also really wanted to pick up some decorations for Lunar New Year. They're wildly affordable there versus how much they would cost here back at home. So first off, I shoved this whole thing in my luggage. I was worried that I would not be able to, so I'm very impressed that I was. We actually got this in Melop when we went to the market with Peter's family one day, and I got five stems of these yellow flowers. These are like a very traditional style where you kind of just put into a vase and you just let it split out. They asked me how many I wanted. I wasn't sure, but I figured let's just go for it. These were 18,000 each. So that translates to be about like $4 a piece or something like that. But we ended up spending 90,000 in total at the end for all this. And I think those around like four or five bucks for all this, which is pretty crazy because I probably would pay $20 for one stem at home here at Michael. So all this for four or $5 Canadian, pretty happy. Gonna put this in my vase and arrange this with that. I also noticed this thing there and I didn't realize that this is what they do is that they strip leaves from trees so that they have twigs and then they adorn the twigs with flowers afterwards. And this is really cool because I noticed some people doing this. You purchase these flowers in bundles of bags like this. You can get them by kilo. And on the ends, it actually has a wire backing. So you twist this around the stem of the tree and it just looks like the tree is vomiting up flowers like everywhere. People will spend hours decorating these trees so that they have like hundreds of flowers on them. And then I saw these and I'm like, this is brilliant. I want this for my olive tree. So we went and we got a bag of them. I think we got like a half kilo to bring home. I don't know exactly how many are in here. I think she said around like a hundred, which is way more than I need for my tree. So my plan is to get this up and on the tree for Lunar New Year. So we can have our house decorated between this and this, I also got these really cool red lanterns. Oh, I forgot to mention, I don't know how much this was because Peter's aunt paid for this for us as like a gift. 
but it was fairly affordable if I remember. It can't be any more expensive than this. So probably like under $10 for this whole bag. It was pretty cheap. And we got this in metal up in the market there. I also got red lanterns like I mentioned, but Peter's sister accidentally took those home with her to Ottawa. So I don't think I'll have those in time for a lunar new year to decorate, but we'll have them next year. They're like these paper lanterns that like just fold and unfold. They're really, really cute. So this is everything that I bought in Vietnam. On our way home, we had a layover in Narita in Tokyo and I managed to do a little bit of damage in the airport. I never really do airport shopping, but like you guys know how much I love Japan and I needed a restock on some cosmetics, on some food snacks. So here's everything that we got. We got quite a bit. In terms of food, we got this plus some more. So we got the Michelin star instant ramen by Nakiryu. I saw it at the 7-Eleven in the airport and I told people to like snatch them, take them home. We got three boxes because that's all we could fit in our luggage. We each had one last night, which is why we only have one left, one of the three. And then I got all these snacks from there as well. Oh, we also got some Royce chocolates, but those are currently sitting in the fridge because I don't want them to melt. So here's a little photo of them. We brought them back last year from our trip and I love them so much that Peter reminded me that we should pick them up when we're in Japan. So we got a box of those each, the matcha ones, and I believe the milk chocolate ones. I am ready to dig in and enjoy one. I probably will after this. I really want to try another one again because I haven't had the milk chocolate one, but the matcha one is like, I'm like, I'm frothing thinking about that chocolate. Anyways, I digress. I love trying Kit Kats and Pockies when I'm there, the different flavors that they have that we don't get. This is a Tokyo Shima lemon. It's pretty. I was intrigued by it. I've never tried this flavor before. So we picked up one box of this. I believe this was around 400 yen at the airport. So just under $4 Canadian. We got two of these Pocky boxes. I have never once seen cantaloupe flavored Pocky. Like never, ever, ever. That was the first time I ever saw it. I think these were 900 yen a box each. So maybe like $8 Canadian per box. And these are like the exercise ones. We got two so we could give one to his family and one for us to keep here. And then I also saw these thick grape ones. Like I've never had grape Pocky before. So intrigued to try. These grapes though looked juicy and truly it was the illustration that got me. So that's the only reason why I got it because I was intrigued by it. Also 900 yen each. So around like $8 Canadian per box. And we originally picked up this box of Ichiran ramen because we hadn't seen this at the 7-Eleven yet. And we wanted more of this. So we grabbed another box of it. I believe there are five servings of this in total. This is around like 2000 yen. So I think like just shy of $20 Canadian for this box, but five servings, that's like $4 a serving. It, incredibly cheap for a bowl of really tasty noodles. And then I also stocked up on some cosmetics because I bought some stuff last time when I was in Japan and I, I loved it and it's been almost a year. They haven't dried out yet, surprisingly, but I know they will soon and I don't know the next time I'm gonna be back in Japan. So I figured let's just, let's just grab some stuff. So I got another brown eyeliner. I love their eyeliners. They are waterproof, smudge proof. They don't budge. And I like brown. It works really nicely on my skin tone and makes it look a lot more natural without it being like really boom in your face. So I picked up a brown one because the existing one that I had is going to phase out soon. This is a heroin make one. I love this brand. It works so well with my skin and it doesn't budge ever. I got another brown mascara. This one is also by heroin make. I love their mascara. It doesn't clump. It's waterproof and it stays all day. And brown just looks so much more like natural and fluffy on my lashes than pitch black. And then I also got this one from Can Make, which is another brown mascara. I've never tried there. So I was curious and intrigued to see if it would give me the same effect as a heroin make one. A little unexpected gift here. It's this from Hermes. I did not think that there was gonna be an Hermes in the airport because Narita is actually quite far out from Tokyo. Usually we go to Haneda and that has all the better stuff, but I saw on the map that there was an Hermes. So I figured let's stop in and see what they have available. My first choice when I saw that map of all the stores was a Chanel to see if I could get a pair of flats. Lo and behold, it's just a Chanel beauty counter. They didn't actually have clothes or shoes or anything. So that saved me there. And then I headed over to the Hermes because it was right next to it. They didn't really have much to be honest. And this is the first thing that caught my eye. I did peruse of the rest of the store. They didn't have any cheap rays at all. They had some Orans and some Oasis sandals, but they're all in the neutral colors that I already have. So I was like, I'm good. This is really the only thing they had. They had bags on display that they weren't going to sell and they had no other bags that they were going to offer me anyway. So I was like, this is cute. Let's go ahead and get it. I actually really like it. So I have not opened this up yet since I bought it. I'm going to show you guys. I'm so excited. It's adorable. It's probably another like knickknack piece that I don't really need, but I think it's really cute. Okay. Tiny little box. If you guys can guess what this is. And it actually has its own little desk bag pouch. Really cute. 
now if I can take this out. So this is a twilly ring. I don't even know what this is called. Okay, so you see this tiny little thing here. This is a twilly ring. It's a really small one because I figured that I have a lot of really thin twillies and I want to be able to wrap them around my neck and pull it upwards to keep them in place without them falling. My other twilly rings are a little bit bigger and I find they slip a little bit. So I wanted something a little bit small. I've never once seen this before. Really cute. I have always had my eye on the bigger square one, but I find that that's a little bit too big for the twilly sizes that I use. So this is going to be perfect for the ones that can go around my neck that are just like the long simple twillies that people wrap around their bag straps. Really adorable. I think this was a 22,000 yen um, on my bank statement. It came down to around like 200 Canadian. Really expensive for a small piece of metal but really cute and not that crazy in the realm of how much I usually spend at Hermes. So this is probably the most expensive thing that I bought on this trip so far as like a single piece item. Even though I did spend like $500 in Hoi An. All right so that is everything that I bought on my Vietnam trip but I guess it's like a Vietnam slash Japan trip now that I bought a bunch of other stuff at the Narita airport as well. Unintentional, not planned. It just so happened that we were there. We saw all the stuff. I was like, I need to get it. I really need to get this stuff. So we did, we bit the bullet. Anyways, that is my whole haul. I think everything together, like 500 bucks in Hoi An, the $200, like I think everything was like well under a thousand dollars Canadian, which is like really, really good budget wise because that's usually how much I spend in one store when I go to Europe. So I got a lot. I'm surprised actually now that I'm looking at everything. That is a lot of stuff. Great haul. I would highly recommend going shopping in Vietnam if you've never been yet. Food is very affordable for North American standard cost points. Same with fashion, buying stuff. It's just everything is so cheap there. It's wild. If you haven't been, you need to go just purely for shopping alone. But no, also food is really good. So yeah, that's everything that I got. I hope you guys enjoyed this like, now it seems like a massive haul video of my trip. I didn't realize I had bought so much stuff, but because the cost was so minimal, it just slowly adds up on you that you go home and you're like, whoa, that that's a lot of shit that I just brought home there. As always, if you want to see more of me, you can always find me on Instagram and on TikTok where I post a little bit more frequently than YouTube. And I will make sure to include links to everything if I can find it down below in the description box the best to my, my abilities I'm gonna have a hard time because a lot of this stuff was from like random vendors so I'll try my best to see if I can find links to like things on Aliexpress or Amazon that are similar if you want a very similar looking thing but yeah otherwise I hope you guys enjoyed this video today I'll be back next week for another one I hope you guys are having an amazing day love you bye